Hello, dear colleagues. In this presentation, we want to tell you about the results of an experiment study that included the reconstruction of a chariot based on the materials of the Sintashta and Petrovka archaeological cultures of the Bronze Age, based on data from 28 chariot burials and a series of shield-type cheek pieces. Uh, we conducted a project that included the study of the controllability of two harnessed horses using an organic bridle with a shoe type cheek pieces, as well as the development of a harness system based on petroglyphic images and field tests on the reconstruction of the chariot. The Sintashta and Petrovka cultures existed in the end of the middle and in the beginning of the Land Bronze Age and were located on the territory of the steppes of the southern Urals and in the northern steppes of the Kazakhstan. The Petrovka culture is a descendant of the Sintashta culture. According to the modern research, we know that Sintashta culture became the core for the formation of the big Andronova culture which in the Late Bronze Age occupied vast territories of the Urals, Siberia and reached Central Asia. According to the genetic data, the Sintashta culture was related to the Corded Ware cultures. Archaeological data also demonstrate that the, the people of the Sintashta culture were immigrants from the West. Linguistically, the people of the Sintashta culture are reconstructed as an Indo-Iranic branch of the Indo-European language family. In the early 70s, archaeologists Vladimir Genin, Gennady Zdanovich and Nikolai Vinogradov found and explored a unique burial ground on the Sintashta steppe river. This is in the south of the Chelyabinsk region in the southern Urals, Russia, almost on the border with the Kazakhstan. The researchers were surprised to find the remains of the chariot complex that included the imprints of the wheels with the spokes, anther shield type cheek pieces, chariot horses, as well as a complex of the weapons for chariot years. Here on this slide you can see a photo of Professor Vinogradov, the imprints of the wheels with spokes, the shield type cheek pieces, the skeletons of the Chariot horses, the Bronze Age battle axe, and even the bronze arrowheads. A fortified settlement, heavily damaged by the river, was also found nearby. Later, in the 1987, Professor Zdanovich discovered the Archaim settlement which demonstrated the Sintashta architecture in more visual form, like on this slide. Here you can see the outline of the Archaim settlement. Sintashta settlements were built of wood and clay. Sometimes the bases of the walls were reinforced with stone. A distinctive feature of the architecture were the large long houses, uh, usually adjoining to the end of the world, to the fortification line and uh, the side walls to each other. According to the various estimates, from the several hundreds to two thousand people could live in such settlement. Each dwelling had a metallurgical furnace and a large well from which cattle were watered in the winter, which was also kept at the entrance to the dwelling. Here you can see a 3D model, the reconstruction of the Archaim settlement. Today, more than 25 settlements of this type are already known. Interesting that in the 70s, the Sintashta was dated according to the type of shield type cheek pieces found in the burials. These type of cheek pieces were well known in the tombs of the Mycenae. You can see on this image uh, a chariot and the bridle with the shield type cheek pieces, the famous image from the pillars. Um, this is also Greek examples of the cheek pieces. And it was logical to assume that the leaders of the periphery of the Bronze Age world system imitated the elite cultural stereotypes of the centers of the civilization and uh, borrowed the chariots. 
Therefore, initially, Sintashta was dated after the 17th centuries, uh, century BC. But in the 90s, Professor David Anthony and Professor Vinogradov made the first radiocarbon dating of the Sintashta chariot burials. And the chariot you know, from the burial ground Ozero showed that the dates uh, was uh, much earlier, uh, the 21st century BC, that shows that uh, Sintashta materials are much older than the, the Messinian ones. Today, more than 300 radiocarbon dates have been obtained for the Sintashta culture, and all of them are in the range uh, of the 21 and 18th centuries BC. This fact makes the Sintashta chariot complex the oldest archaeologically found so far. Also, the Sintashta uh, chick pieces and spoke wheels are the earliest known for uh, that moment. At the moment, the Sintashta and Petrovka cultures are the most studied in the archaeology of northern Eurasia. Uh, people of Sintashta come from the western territories and created a unique model of economy which was based on the settled cattle breeding and developed mythological production in the environment of the steppe. The population concentration for the steppe region was very high. During the development of the new territory, the Sintashta people built large fortified settlements that protected cattle and metal production. The territories of the southern Urals rich in oxidized copper ores, malachite and azurite, made it possible to produce a lot of copper and bronze. Every Sintashta dwelling has evidences of the metal production or casting. There is also evidence of long-distance trade, mm, trade connections uh, in Sintashta. For example, oxidized fragments of cotton fabric were found in Sintashta materials. The chronological priority of these chariots, based on the radiocarbon data and recognized in the world science. But this is a big debate about the purpose of the chariots. Some researchers believe that the chariots was only ritual. Others believe that it was used for military purposes. As an archaeological prototype of the chariot complex, we uh, use the chariot from the burial from the Krivo Ozero burial ground. The main argument in favor of the ritual function of the Sintashta chariots is usually considered to be the small um, width of their axles. The track width of many Sintashta chariots exceeds uh, one and a half meter, but we took as an example the smallest chariot with a wheel track width of 125 centimeters. Here you can see the archaeological data of the burial and its graphic reconstruction. Good preservation of organic materials made it possible to accurately recreate the track width the uh, construction of wheels with spokes and hubs, according to the data, the length of the pole was recreated, as well as the possible body uh, structure of the chariot. To reconstruct the harness system, uh, we used data from the Bronze Age harness from different cultures, petroglyphs of the northern Eurasia, and data from our own tests. We trained two horses to ride in a team, which had never been in a team before. We chose specially short horses, about one and a half meter at the withers, which is close to the size of Bronze Age horses. It took about a month for the horses to get used to the chariot and harness of the Bronze Age. After three months of the experiment, the horses and the chariot deer felt confident. In the second year of the experiment, horses began to effectively control even by the voice comments. They are consistent with the descriptions of uh, Kikuli treatise about training horses uh, for about 10 months. 
An important area of the experiment was the study of the engine harness system. To test the hypothesis that organic beads and chick pieces are an effective means of controlling chariot horses, we carried out an experiment on controlling a pair of horses. You can see a photo of the experiment on the slide. It was assumed that the more effective the control means, the better the horses feel the driver's comments and maneuver more efficiently. The measure of efficiency was the reversal of the cart in motion in an arc. The driver turned the chariot in a full arc, giving the horses comments to turn by the pulling the reins. After each turn, the distance along the outer track from the beginning to the end of the arc was measured. First, the most ancient harness without a bit. The average diameter of the semicircle of the U-turn was about 11.5 meters. In the second series of races, the horses were controlled using rawhide bits with the chick pieces. The average diameter of the semicircle of the U-turn was about 9 meters. In the third race, the control was carried out with the help of modern steel two-part bits. The average diameter of the semicircle of the U-turn was 8 meters. Controllability increased from the halter to soft roads and to steel trencils, to steel bits. The experiment showed that the shield-type chick pieces were an effective means of controlling horses, similar in efficiency to the modern harness. At the same time, such chick pieces are the irritating and traumatic factor for the horses. A long harness with such uh, long time harness uh, with such uh, type of chick pieces is impossible. This suggests that the chick pieces appeared as a part of the chariot harness. They significantly increased mm, controllability. For riding as well as uh, for wagons, uh, this type of harness was not needed in the Sintashta era. The wheels turned out to be the most difficult from engineering point of view. They were made of bent oak. The segments were held together with bone glue and animal tendons. Despite the absence of metal parts, the wheels turn out to be the very durable. In archaeology are known the remains of tires on the Sinterstein Petrovka chariots. Testing of leather tires has shown their effectiveness. When riding on the wheels without tires, the wheels were damaged by even little stones. The use of leather tire protected the wheels and also made them stronger. The wheels with spokes is difficult to manufacture and it's designed to light the weight of the cart. The weight of our chariots was near 38 kilograms, which is comparable uh, to the Egyptian chariots of the Bronze Age. The use of a completely organic wheel with spokes uh, in the Sintashta era can be only using for combat or competitive purposes. For travel or cargo transportation, a solid wooden wheel would be much more efficient. And in the second year of testing, we conducted experiments with bow shooting from the chariot at the moving targets. Movement of the step chariot was steady. Uh, images of charioteer warriors armed with a bow can be seen on the numerous petroglyphs of northern Eurasia, for example, in Kazakhstan. The main conclusions. The time spent on making a chariot shows a serious investment of ancient society. The ancient Sintashta type of harness is effective and safe. Chariot recreated according to their archaeological data is strong enough to carry two adults and light enough to gallop and steady in motion. Engineering solution of Sintashta chariot showed that it was a real chariot is used for combat or competition. Dear colleagues, thank you for the attention.